feel like we probably should have scripted this one. <laughs> All right, just got into the store and um, we, we've done a ton of figure skating, sharpenings and figure skating fixes and stuff. I haven't done too much hockey. So we had these left overnight. Um, Power Supremes and a uh, customer wants a 100 over 50 hollow. We talked a little bit about flat bottom once before. Um, I think the benefits of flat bottom are great. I honestly switched my son Ronan from half inch to uh, 100 over 50 and he didn't even notice because you get the same kind of feel as half inch with 100, 100 over 50, but um, you have less drag. He's still lazy though. Spinner system, put the spinner in the machine. And we're gonna dress the wheel to, uh, to a half inch. We're gonna use just the regular Hockey jig. That's my matrix one over there. So these are super easy. They just clamp in. Figure skates are really the, 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 the difficult ones to sharpen. Um, with hockey skates, it's just consistency. Same amount of pressure on the front, same amount of pressure on the heel, same amount of pressure in the middle. You're going to burn the same amount of steel all the way across, and you're not going to alter that radius or contour at all. So a lot of the times you'll see tons of blade burned off on the front and tons of blade burned off on the back. That's because guys will go really slow when they first start. Then they zip really fast through the middle, and then they go really slow on the way out. When you go slow in different spots, and then you go fast in other spots, you're burning just different amounts of steel. So you're going to be burning steel on the toe and the heel and going fast through the middle. It's kind of like the ice surface. Zamboni goes really slow around the outside, and they get the water turned on all the way. And then when you notice they go through the middle, they're going full speed. They still have the water turned on all the way, but they're going twice the speed. So the ice always builds up really high around the boards. That's why once every couple weeks, you'll see you know some guy walking around with a little machine. It's called an edger. And he'll walk around the outside of the surface until they basically knock down a bunch of that ice to bring it level to the middle, simply because they're going slow on the boards with a bunch of water, going fast in the middle with the same amount of water, you know, you're laying half as much ice in the uh, in the middle than you are on the on, on the, the board. So it's the same concept as sharpening, where slow in the front, slow in the back, slow in the front. You're going to burn more steel fast in the middle. You're going to burn less steel. So we're going to dress the wheel to 100 over 50 and uh, get this thing lined up. All right, so we got dressed up to half inch. I usually take a brush or like actually I'm looking kind of lazy, so take the air can a lot. So we're just gonna do two test marks, front and the back. We'll do one on the front, one on the back. Let's see if we can take a look at them on camera. This one here looks pretty good. Actually, it's in the middle. This one here, you can see how it's wider up at the top and thinner down the bottom. That means the steel needs to move this way in order to get the wheel closer to the middle. So we're gonna use a dial on the side here. We're gonna go two clicks and we'll give it a try. Oh, still gotta go, I think. If you look at the test mark, it's still a little bit high, so we're going to go again. Mm, pretty close, I would say. Go one more click. Oh, nope, I lied. That, that one's good. See how that one's in the middle there? So we're going to double check the front. That one looks pretty good. We are switching this from 100 over 50 from so the test marks aren't going to look exactly the same because there's a different contour on the wheel than is on the skate right now. So now that we have them level, let's talk about consistency. You want to be moving when you start sharpening instead of a lot of people will go in this way and then sharpen. You want to be moving and you want to stay to like this part of the wheel. You don't want to get yourself out into here. So a little bit of an angle coming in. And if you look at the color of my sparks, they're gonna be the same all the way across, or I'm gonna to try to make them the same all the way across, because that means, again, we're gonna be burning the same amount of steel when we initial contact to the end. So there's a lot of different theories on sharpening. Guys go fast, guys go super slow. I even see guys that go back and forth. Please don't ever do that. These are a pair of rental skates, so we're gonna uh, be able to go back and forth on them, not ruin them. So, two bunch of reasons why you don't go back and forth. One, you go back and forth, watch the color, of the, watch the color of the sparks. See how it just got dark and then went light again. It just got dark and went light again. Dark and light again. That means I'm burning more steel here and more steel here, which means over time we're gonna have way more of a contour on the skate than initially than initially it came with. So. For this one, and sorry, I forgot about the other thing. 
your, your, your wheel's going this way. If you're going across the wheel, you're putting a ton of stress on your motor. Uh, you want to bring your motor right real quick? Go back and forth a bunch of times. So we're going to stay consistent. That's about the speed I like. So after a couple of passes, we're going to take a look at it, make sure that we're catching the top and the bottom of the steel, which we are. So, and I can also see it on the wheel as well. So then I'm going to take it. I have a really good backdrop up there where I can see the, uh, the skate. See, I can see it's a little bit high on the toe here. And the back actually is a little bit high on this side. So I'm going to drop this side a little bit. I'm going to raise that side a little bit. So I'm kind of cutting across right now. So I'll drop this one click and we'll raise this up just a little bit. I'm going to drop it two clicks. And then I'll be able to see it cutting on the bottom of the wheel, hopefully. Yep. And then this should switch to cutting on the top, which it didn't that much. So I'm going to go down one more. One other thing about how you, how you hold your jig. So I, I had an interesting conversation with um, with our new figure skating director here, and everybody has a different theory on how to hold uh, the jig. It's got two little you know balls on it here, so you can't really hold this. You kind of lose control of it a little bit. So what I like to do is take my middle finger, put it on the ground here. Come oh, dirty hand. Middle finger put it on here, and that can kind of control my speed. And I do the same thing on this side as well. So push across here and I'll use this to kind of drag in and control how fast I'm going. Because if not, the wheel's spinning that way, it's gonna pull you that way. So, see my fingers down there? I'm going to, as I start to go across, my finger's gonna dig in just a little bit and control my speed. That way, I'm, it allows me to be a little more consistent. So, that looks good. I cut all the way across, so that's straight there straight there as well so we're good sometimes I'll use the leveler just to you know double check my my eyes but like I said I have a really good backdrop back there and I've been doing this a long time and I know a lot of people might chirp me for uh, for not using a level leveler all the time but like these things if you look at the bottom this one's been used quite a bit so it's got some ridges on it so if it's got ridges on it and you put it flat on something it could lean itself either way. So, if this bottom isn't completely uh, straight, then how's it going to be completely straight on the uh, on the skate, right? Yeah, we're good. Stone it real quick. Stone every hockey skate. I don't stone every figure skate. There's some uh, carbon steel blades and figure that I don't I don't stone. But we're going to put a stone to this one, and then quick little wipe. We're good lifelong injuries of a skate guy. You know you, you know a guy's been working in a store a long time when he's got scars right here? It's from stony skates and it's slipping off and then hitting your thumb right there. So you'll go to stone a skate, slip off, hit your thumb. That's why usually you like to put it down on a uh, solid surface. And then if you try doing it when it's up here, that's when it'll slip off and you'll hit your thumb. Don't do that. So that's it, 150 from half inch, flat bottom hollow, big fan of it. My son uses it, I use it as well. Um, except I sharp my skates probably once every couple of years because I just coach, I don't play anymore. So uh, if you have any questions on uh, sharpening and stuff, I know you guys send me emails. If you have any requests on any videos, uh, let me know. But please hit like and uh, subscribe. See you guys later.